Ooh. Hello. How are you today? I'm here today. We're going to do a, a, a video about a Jen Ricky. Okay. Here we go. Jen Ricky. I can hold a bot's tail. This is basically just a Jim Dandy that uh, Gretsch decided they put a pickup in. I don't know why, but they decided they put a pickup in because I guess some people are putting pickups in them. And uh, I'm not a Jen Ricky hater, okay? People go, why don't you just buy a Jen Ricky instead of making the hot rod Jim Dandy? I made the hot rod Jim Dandy before they put the pickup in the Jen Ricky. I did that, that when the, they first came out. I was putting pickups in them. Also, I was putting a tailpiece on them to increase the sustain. That is why I do it. They, people ask, why you put a tailpiece? I put a tailpiece because we have metal strings hooked to a metal tailpiece screwed to the back of the guitar. It's not being transferred through the wood. So it increases the sustain quite a bit. This is what Gretsch did on a Jen Ricky, okay? So yeah, they put a pickup on it. That's about the extent of it. It's like, let's do this as cheap as we can. Uh, they put a pickup on there <clears throat> that you can't, uh, it's a single coil, no big deal, that's fine. But it has no adjustments. You cannot raise this pickup up and down. Uh, it's just, it, that's it. If, you, if it's not hot enough for you, then that's not hot enough for you. Uh, another thing is they did not put a, a volume or a tone knob on it. Even if they didn't put a volume on it, they should have put a tone on it so you can kind of tweak the sound a little bit. The volume uh, helps immensely too, you know, in, in passages you want to get a little quieter in or just you want to shut it off in general and turn it back on. But they didn't put a volume and a tone knob on it, so you can't really change it. You're kind of just stuck with that sound. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I don't like, on, and I, you know, I got a bunch of guitars. Uh, I don't know who thought this idea up. I don't know what the deal is, but they put a end pin jack in it too. Now I'm not a big fan of end pin jacks for a lot of reasons, and you know this is true. You can sit there and go, oh, what's wrong with the end pin jack? I'll tell you what's wrong with the end pin jack. You're sitting there, you reach around the side of the guitar just to play, and you end up breaking the doggone jack off. How many of you have done that? Jack off. I mean, break the jack off. Anyhow, how many of you have done that? Uh, I don't like them. And then, you can't hardly get them out. I've worked on a couple of ovations that I just said, that's it, man. We can't do squat with it. I, I couldn't even replace the jack in the doggone thing. So I don't use an end pin jack on my guitar. I could drill it out and put one in there. But I, on most of my guitars, period, I'll put like a jack plate, a gold or a silver one on there, or just put the jack right into the guitar. These guitars are really, really strong, so they can handle having a jack put in them. So this video, I'm going to let you hear a Jen Ricky, okay? And it's not going to be colored in any way. I don't do that with my other guitars, except when they're finished, uh, I might, uh, towards the end of the video, might start, you know, adding, you know, delays and crap like that. But just to let you hear how something sounds, uh, there are videos I've got where the amp is just, just on, okay? And it's set relatively flat. Uh, this here, I'm using <clears throat> the... Uh, Orange Crush Pro 120. It's a wonderful sounding amp in the clean mode. I've got everything set at 12 o'clock, so it's flat, okay? It's just set up flat. And you run the guitar, the, the Jim Dandy through it after I get one, and it really is a, a glassy, clear sound to it. It's really, really pretty. And if you don't want it that glassy, you can change it a little bit by simply adjusting the tone, as you've seen in my videos. You can adjust it way down and get it a really jazz sound to it. And so this is set up. I've got it mic'd with a Sennheiser 421. And so, you know, they're a, a very true, good sounding uh, microphone. Uh, it's running directly in to, I believe it's called a, a seismic uh, uh, interface. Uh, it's not colored there with any tone controls and going directly into the uh, record input on my iPad 10. And so we don't have anything coloring the, the thing here. I'm just going to play this guitar before I, uh, you know, do my thing to it. Uh, and you'll see what we're going to do to this guitar. And uh, some of you will be, oh man, that guy's a Jen Ricky hater. No, I'm not. I'm not a Jen Ricky hater. If that's what you want, and if you like that dark sound for the, the, if you want that on there, that's cool. I just like a little more versatility 
if I'm gonna plug a guitar in. I wanna be able to adjust the tone on it. I'd rather have the pickup where I can adjust the pickup. And I certainly don't like an M-pin jack. I want the jack lower down here on the lower bout away from me. So I'm not reaching around the guitar and accidentally busting the doggone jack off of it. So I'm just going to play this a little bit so you can hear everything set up flat, okay? Anyhow, so here is the guitar. This is a Gen Ricky, and I'm going to play it with my fingers first, okay? And uh, so you can hear what it sounds like with my fingers, and then I'll use a pick on it and kind of brighten it up a little bit. sure it sounds fine it's just it's not really a very versatile little guitar <laughs> to install all of this on the Gretsch Gen Ricky. Okay, here we go. Here is our Gen Ricky and uh, I had somebody comment and ask me why I didn't save the strings on the ones that I took apart. And, uh, you know, that made sense. Uh, it's just I don't want to. So here we go. We cut off these strings. These strings are offending me. Pluck out the eye that offends thee. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to get rid of these offensive strings. Oh, there they are. Oh, Mr. Goofer. Mr. Goofer. Okay. That was Carl from Caddyshack. You're a monkey woman, Mrs. Johnson. You're a monkey woman. Okay. And we just get rid of the old strings. Now. I just have a lot of strings to put on my guitars that I work on, so I don't worry about that. Now, if this was a cheeseburger, I would save it. <laughs> okay, now, what do we want to change? First, let's just clean it up a little bit. Jun Ricky. So, let's get our tools over here and uh, the proper tool for the proper job. We will be removing this Gretchatonic, <clears throat> the Gretchatonic pickup. There is the uh, Gretchatonic pickup, okay. They've got the wire tacked in the inside. It goes back to this jack on the end. What we're going to do is we're going to bit, put new wiring in it. So in that case, we will reach in here and cut the Gretchatonic pickup free. I'm free. I'm free. Okay, so we'll get rid of the Gretchatonic pickup. Put it over there for the time being. What we will be putting in is this tappable mini humbucker. Ooh la la, and it is, man, it's a beefy, beefy little uh, pickup there. 
You notice it's in a P90 pickup ring. I had to order that. This is so you can actually mount a uh, humbucker, mini humbucker, in a P90 situation. Now, my P90 mount here is a little bit shy of that, but no problem. At least I'm capable of raising and lowering the pickup now, which is really, really cool. So what we're gonna do is you go, what are you gonna do with them other holes? Well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do with them other holes. We're gonna leave them there. We're gonna leave them there because I have got some beautiful gold plated screws that we will be putting in those little holes. As soon as I can get them out of here. There we go. Gold plated screws. And get my little cool diver. Because the these holes are beveled, it will be groovy. So we're gonna put these down in here. Ah, <laughs> pudding. You could actually just leave the holes if you wanted to, but who cares? <sighs> Beautiful. Tell me where to drill my holes at. So that's what we're going to do. We'll go ahead and, and mount this pickup. And then I will be back in a second. Okay, time to put a few holes in it. This will still be the strap button, but our input jack will be down here on the lower bout. This will keep us from breaking the doggone thing off. And if it does malfunction, at least we can replace it. I've got those memorize the steps so that is the hole for that jack there Ooh la la there we go that's this one and this time i'm going to do something really cool we're going to gretch this sucker up i'm going to put one of the knobs down here and i'm going to put one of the knobs up here just like a gretch would okay i'm going to put one right there and this one will be the volume control and this one up here in the corner will be the tone control so i'll make sure that i clear that sucker there there we go right about the cheer nothing wrong with exact measurements I want to know what you say. That's the one. Heck yeah. Yep. Now, in our volume, we will put down here. So we will reach down here and make sure everything is fine. Yeah, man. Rock shear. Okay. Then we'll have our holes drilled. I 
always stop a step before, make sure that we are good to go. We're good to go. Okay. Now we're down to the third step. Perfect. Exactly what I wanted. Okay. I'll have to chop up my wiring harness a little bit, but that's what we're going to do. This is going to be the tone control up in this corner, and down here in this corner is going to be the volume. And then we'll have our new pickup in there, and of course we'll have our gold Bigsby tailpiece on it. Okay, now we're going to do the Bigsby. <clears throat> we're going to lay this on here. I got a couple little pilot holes, but we will go ahead and line this up anyhow. So what you do is you put that on there. Make sure that your holes in the bridge line up so it cuts just the corners of the inside of the Bigsby, which this one does. Okay? And this here lines up perfectly straight up and down with the back of the uh, uh, end pin, okay? Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut a couple small blocks and reach inside. I'm gonna pilot hold these blocks and screw these to the insides of the blocks at the top of the guitar. Okay, now we have our vibrato screwed on to the top of the guitar with our blocks on the inside. Put a drop of glue on there, give the block something to hang on to. This wood is, is really dense and it's relatively thick, believe it or not. And so uh, it does a real good job for helping uh, hanging on to the, to the screw threads. First, the input jack. Look at this menagerie of solder. Take this here, and we will feed uh, the solder through the input jack, make a little hook. And we will pull the jack back through the guitar. That's the story. We'll just see if it works. Oh, it looks like it did a little bit, because there it is. Now, we've got the nut and everything on our solder. We let it travel like a choo-choo train down to the bottom. Put that on. And hopefully the nut will start a little easier than my last one. I don't want to press real hard because I'll push the jack off the end of the solder. Ooh, voila, 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 Washington, look at that. Went right on. Then we take the solder, pull the solder out. I use the solder because it's bendable and it's easy to uh, use as a fish hook. And we tighten the old jack down. Didn't even have to hang on to the thread this time. Look at that. She's on there. But we will be using the old 
Midnight Madness. Parley Boo Hubba Hubba. And paint the threads. Now, the old jack is nothing but the strap peg. The new jack is in the lower bout. So whenever you take your hand and go by that, you ain't gonna break it off. Now we've got our volume pot, which I've soldered, and it's gonna go in this back hole here. So I'm gonna put this down like this, get my washer and a nut ready, and I gotta reach in here the easiest thing to do actually is to put the rest of my electronics in there it's easy to move my wrist around okay put the rest of my electronics in reach in here well oh, that feels good yeah yeah i like that i wish i could leave my hand in here all the time okay good lord <laughs> Hmm. No. Oh, hey, what's this? Hello. Who we got here? Look at that. That was meant to be. I'm going to guess it's this size. Oh, I guess right. This is a volume. I've tested all the electronics out inside the shop. Good and tight. All right. Our uh, pickup is in there. And there is our tone control. And our tone goes up in this corner. So we'll reach in there and see if we can get the tone in there. Oh, mama. This is a new one for me. I've never done this before. I mean, with the tone control. Ah, oh, I made it. Uh-oh. We don't want to lose this chance. Guitar got heavy with that Bigsby on there. Picked up a little bit of weight. Now, we have a tone control up here on the upper bow of the guitar. And it looks cool. Take my little wrench, cross-handed, and we'll tighten that down right in front of me. Because I kept my finger on the back side of the pot, and these pots have a little leg that sticks down that hangs on to the inside of the wood anyhow. But I don't want it to slip, so I just got my hand in there anyhow. And she is tight. Now we are ready to put the pickup in. We've got the volume down here. We have the tone up there. Um, what I'm gonna do is reach inside before I do that. I'll turn the camera back on, but I'm gonna take this uh, wire on the inside of it, okay? We'll be right back. Now our wiring is out of the way for that. So here is our mini humbucker in the P90 mount. So, we're gonna put it right there, wherever we want it, actually. I think I'll put it, move it up a little bit. Yeah, cause I can. I can put it anywhere I want. But, I believe, if I put it right there, that's where the old one was at. I tell you what, we'll put it right there and let it line up with the other one. Okay, so now we will mark this. And put a tiny hole here.
one of my handiest tools. My father bought me this extension for my Dremel, good Lord, 30 years ago. And I have used it and used it and used it, and it is wonderful. Okay, there is our humbucker on the P90. Got our holes drilled, looking good. Move our light up out of the way and bring it around here. Okay, and I've got some pretty gold screws that we're gonna put in there. These are beveled also. So we will use this screwdriver. Actually, when I drill these holes, I don't even drill them all the way through. I do that on purpose so that my screw can really grab through. I just push down nice and easy. And when I push down, it helps it shove that thing right down in there. Oh, that is so pretty, that's pretty. Now our pickup is adjustable by these outside screws. We can raise and lower our pickup. And it's not a single coil. I'm talking about, if you look at the, I'll find it. Don't go away, folks. This is the Jen Ricky pickup, and I'll show you probably why I'm not real impressed with the pickup. I mean, I, yeah, I know that, that a lot of people use these guitars for Delta Blues and stuff like that. But if, even if you were going to use like a, a really cheap pickup, I mean, I want you to look at this thing. It's the size of a potato chip. There's just, there's no gain to it whatsoever. There can't be any tonal characteristics per se. It's just, uh, it's the top of it looks pretty neat. I, I do like that. Uh, they should have, you know, they should put a better pickup in this doggone thing. It's just... That looks sharp, it's not adjustable, and there's just absolutely no pickup there whatsoever, per se. The humbucker is, uh, of course, I don't need to tell you about a humbucker. That's gonna sound incredible. Okay, now we're gonna put our new metal dome knobs on. Yeah, but, but knock, a, knock a monkey out with that thing. Okay, these are actually probably brass and gold plated. So we'll put one here. We'll put one here. Take it off the neck brace. Oh my gosh, that is gorgeous. God. Okay, every time, unfortunately, every time I build one of these, I have to end up building myself one. I love this guitar. This is so bad to the bone. Look at that. Holy smokes. Is that a dream boat? Uh, this is going to Terry in Chicago. He has one of my hot rod Jim Dandies. And this is a <laughs> hardcore hot rod Jim Ricky. And I've decided to, after I get done with it, I'm going to call it a hot Ricky. This is the South. Yeah, that's just, oh man. I love it. Okay, now we're going to install the brass and it's gold-plated compensated do 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 bridge, okay? And uh, I did a little work on it to make sure that it was the same height as the one that was in it because I kind of like that action. Of course, I'll adjust the neck and everything after the fact. So now we're gonna put that in and it's a little bit shy of the other one. So we'll just split the difference there Push it down in, give it a tap with the rubber handle. Okay, now you may notice that I've got these things, these marks. This actually, I've taken a Dremel. This is where the holes came out in the back of the bridge. I took a Dremel and cut this slot down. And so I just laid the bit on its side and let it burn its way down through to the hole. That's so the strings will travel 
under the bar through here unobstructed over the top of the bridge. So we're going to get contact from here to there. Okay, it's time for the pig test. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be interesting. So I guess we'll find out, won't we? Get the old pig. Plug it in. Plug it into our new jack down here on the bottom or on the side. Okay, the pig is on. I've turned up the pig a little bit. Nothing. Here's the volume. Woo! Here's the tone. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Dynamite. Well, that pickup is hot, too. Ten through forty six.